In this video, we're going to show you how to run faster at any age. We're going to show you that age is just a number by showing you the eight things you need to manufacture your running success. And we will unravel the major secret to boost your speed, power, and endurance by using what we call just-in-time intervals. I'm not sure about you, but I have an iPhone and the battery life on this iPhone is just getting worse and worse over time. The more I use it, the more I have to charge it up again. And so if you want to get faster as you're getting older, you have to charge yourself a little bit more. And how do we do that? We do that with recovery. So as you're getting older, we adjust our training plan so that you have more recovery, much like in the same way that my iPhone needs more charging over time. A few years ago, I got COVID. Coming back from COVID and trying to get back into running, I realized I needed to lay a good aerobic base foundation, knowing that this would be the safest way for me to return to training. At the end of my 12 week aerobic base block, I decided to run a 5K time trial, and as a result, actually ran a sub 30 minute 5K PB. Having a good aerobic base offers better substrate or energy utilization, better recovery, and as a result, makes you a more efficient runner. It also does reduce your risk of illness and injury. What is an aerobic base or how do we go about building this aerobic base? Your aerobic base should be the larger or the bigger component of your running volume. So see this as, or see your training structure as a pyramid. The base of your pyramid, the biggest amount of volume, needs to be aerobic type work. Aerobic being in the presence of oxygen from a physiological point of view. So using oxygen to help delivery of those energy systems. And from a training point of view, that is your lower intensity running, your easy runs. So recovery zone one, zone two type of runs. Because this intensity is so low, you usually can get away then with larger volumes and larger amounts of this kind of training. Being more efficient, it also then allows you to be training more consistently week in, week out, month in, month out, and put cycles on top of each other without interruptions of, as I mentioned, illness and potential risk of injury. Imagine you own a business that has a factory that, that manufactures rubber ducks. Your target is to create 10,000 rubber ducks and you have a thousand workers who do this. Over time, you start to cut some costs and you cut that down to 600 workers. But the goal or the target is still to create 10,000 rubber ducks. Essentially, those 600 workers are now doing the work of a thousand workers and as a result have to work so much harder. Your body is like this factory. The workers are your muscles and the rubber duck is like you're running. So you're essentially asking your body to do the same output with less workers, with less muscle mass. And so this is why strength training becomes absolutely pivotal the older you get. It allows us to build lean muscle mass over time and very often can reverse the effects of aging and all that lean muscle mass that we lose over time. We have to do this in a progressive way. Don't just suddenly start throwing around a whole bunch of weights. Start off nice and slow. Start off with some body weight work and build yourself up in a good progressive way, much like you would your running. We've all got very busy lives and often less time to do certain things that we might need to spend more time on. For me, it was when my child was younger and having to prepare dinner. Now my child loves saucy foods. So I'm talking about things like pasta sauce and spaghetti and meatballs was his favorite. When I had to prep this food, that sauce takes time to cook, it's prepared with love and care, and you've got to give it time to simmer and get just right. But of course, now you've got a small child in the house that he wants to eat right now. And no matter how much I try and convince him that we've got to take our time with the food, he's like, nope, we must eat right now. So you take a three hour recipe and you do it in 30 minutes and the end result is something very, very underwhelming. The child doesn't matter, but I've got standards, so I'm not very happy with it. And when it comes to running, we often make the mistake of wanting to save time and then cutting out things that we shouldn't be cutting out. And one of the things that seems to go often is the warm up and the cool down. We see the stuff in the middle as the important stuff and that the warm up and the cool down are just the dentists of the session. But the warm up helps you prepare you to get ready to do the work you need to do in the session. And a good cool down means that you don't go from high intensity and just stopping all of a sudden and you ease yourself, ease yourself back into rest. So don't skimp on those parts of the workouts. The warm-up in particular is so, so important because when you start off in a high intensity session, you run the risk of injury if you're starting from cold to hot immediately. So allocate that time and do the work you need to do. If you do need to cut things out, actually shorten the session a little bit 
and accommodate a good warm up and a solid cool down. I had a runner come to me recently who's been off running with a stress fracture. In fact, it turned out she'd had three stress fractures over the last few years. She was a marathon and ultra running and was keen to get back to running marathons and ultras. She'd been advised by her doctor to hire a run coach to help her return to running safely. When I met her, she wasn't allowed to run yet. So we reflected back over her training logs and I asked her in depth about how she went about her training. How had she structured her training? She was also a swimmer too, so how had she juggled her activities with her family life and her really busy, big job that she had? Did she do strength training? When did she eat? Did she have breakfast, lunch? As her training unraveled, it became clear she was a very busy person and most of her training was done very early, early in the morning. Then it was a rush back to take the kids to school before starting work. I asked her how she fueled or refueled her workouts and her reply was she was too busy, maybe a cup of tea, but definitely always a good evening meal. But even that, in my opinion, was light on carbs. So before she started back to running, we developed a nutrition strategy where she ate breakfast and lunch and dinner regularly. We found ways to fit it into her busy lifestyle and eventually around her training. We slowly built her up to a marathon from a stress fracture with the focus on fueling and run walking. She recently just completed that marathon five minutes faster than last year of less training coming back but from a stress fracture this time, but focusing on fueling. Her comments afterwards was that she felt much stronger throughout the race. Nutrition was a big factor in achieving her goals. If you neglect to fuel your body, everything suffers. Physiologically, your body needs to replenish its energy reserves. Muscles need to repair themselves. So for your bone health, your muscle health, your energy levels and overall well-being. Take a look at your nutrition and fuel well for your training and goals. Another component to running faster is the just-in-time interval system. These intervals offer a neuromuscular, anaerobic and aerobic adaptation. By doing these intervals, it stimulates your ability to move by supplying energy using less oxygen and more sugars or glycogen then stimulates your aerobic metabolism during recovery. This will improve your ability to recover between big efforts during a race. The JIT intervals also help improve your power, speed, and speed endurance. No matter your age, it's key to do the right type of intervals at the right time in your training cycle. Even more important here though, is to learn to walk before you run. What I mean by that is your ability is going to dictate whether you should be doing intervals and when to introduce those intervals into your training. Not everyone should dive straight into intervals if, for example, you're just starting out and running is completely new to you. Be safe, slow progression into intervals and then making sure you are doing the right kind of intervals. One of the key contributors to running fast at any age is consistency. What I mean by this is doing more of the right thing most of the time. I'm not talking about a single magical session or even just one week. I'm talking about across the week doing all the right things, doing your easy runs, doing your strength training, and also being hyper vigilant about recovery. And then it means you've got to stack that on week on week on week on week. It's how much training you do over a prolonged period of time, more than a single week or a single session that's going to determine how well you can keep performing. If you can stay consistent for long periods of time, months, years, and so on, you'll find your performance will build and you're not gonna lose performance even as you get older. I really love my photography and have invested thousands in cameras and lenses and tripods. However, it was only when I realized that getting composition and lighting right that my photography would go to the next level. Once I got the composition and the lighting right, my photos started looking much better. Those are the basics, those are the skills we need to be putting in place. The same really applies for your running. Do the fundamentals right, stop trying flashy things, get the basics right. Do the right kind of training, allow for consistency and repetition. Now repetition I know often comes down to this mind-numbing sort of training and a lot of plans you might see will often try 
something flashy, try something different so that it isn't the continuous mind-numbing repetition of doing the same sessions over and over again. However, it's that repetition where adaptation takes place. So go back to the basics, make sure you're putting the fundamentals in place. And when we talk about that repetition and that mind-numbingness, that in itself builds mental toughness and resilience. So it's when you get into those longer races and the long training runs even for that matter, that you can tough it out and just keep going and get your session or your race done in the best possible way. So just like in photography, we're nailing the basics of lighting and composition is key. In order to run faster at any age, you need to master the fundamentals as discussed in this video. In order to be an all-round great runner, you need to improve your speed and stamina. Now that you know how to improve your speed, watch this video next where we reveal a simple way to improve your stamina. Only watch it though if you want to run longer without getting tired.